15 Things You Didn't Know About Timberland Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Word to you Aluxers, welcome back. Timberland's position as a pop culture shoe brand has lasted almost as long as, well, premium Timberland boots last. These boots, originally created for harsh, cold, and construction environments, have been quoted in verses from everyone from Notorious B.I.G. to Jay-Z. And once these guys have your number, you're not going back to the farm. Here are some interesting facts about Timberland you probably didn't know that tell the story of what made the shoe and the brand what it is today. Number 1. A shoe by any other name would be just as sweet. Timberland fans have heaps of slang terms that refer to the most well-known of the iconic brand, the classic six-incher boot. The obvious one is the abbreviation TIMS. In Philadelphia, they're referred to as butters. Head to NYC and you'll hear them called constructs, a tribute to their original intended use in the construction environment. Number 2. Timberlands weren't always called Timberlands. Aside from the slang term for the shoes, these boots only got their original name in the 1970s. Before that, they were called Abingtons. Nathan Schwartz got into the shoe business when he bought the Abington Shoe Company in 1952. Originally, they were contracted to manufacture other companies' designs, but Schwartz saw the potential for this little shoe company and did some major upgrades. With their own lines and innovations, the company name changed to Timberland in the 1970s. Number 3. Innovation allowed them to create a waterproof boot in 1969. Within a short time of Schwartz taking over Abington Shoe Company, he incorporated injection molding technology into his shoe manufacturing. He used this to create the first fully waterproof boot that launched to the American public a few years later, and the start of the Timberland boot we recognize today. The boots came in varieties that suited either cold temperatures or tropical weather. Number 4. The waterproofing involved toilet tests. The Timberland Company was passionate about quality and serious about their claim that the boots were waterproof. In the early 70s, the boots were left in the toilet overnight to test just how waterproof they really were. The boots passed the test, but we are so glad that testing machinery has come a bit more standardized for this kind of thing. And this isn't the only time the company nearly went down the toilet. Stick around to find out how the leadership nearly flushed their reputation. Number 5. The first TV commercial advertising a boot was made by Timberland. The company took a bold decision to make the first TV commercial by a boot manufacturer, and it's safe to say it gave the boot to the competition. They struggled to keep up with demand for the shoes and had to move to bigger premises in Newmarket, New Hampshire. Number 6. The 1980s were for international expansion. Having built a solid following in North America, the Timberland Company expanded into international markets. They started with Italy in 1984, and in a few years they were in every country in Europe. The expansion needed a much bigger production facility and the company once again relocated, this time to Tennessee. Number 7. By 1985, they had sold 1 million pairs. Timberland had landed and sales were skyrocketing. The boots were now available all over. Surprisingly, even luxury retailers like Bergdorf Goodman stocked Timberland boots. The classic boot for ladies was created in the mid-80s and the Timberland company was happy to splash the news around. They took out a two-page black and white ad in the New Yorker and this prime real estate listing had Bergdorf Goodman on Fifth Avenue as their stockists. Number 8. Rappers made Timberland even larger. The 70s and 80s were good in terms of sales for Timberland boots, but when the 90s hit, sales went through the roof. Rappers started endorsing the brand and the lyrics of their songs. We already mentioned Notorious B.I.G.'s influence, but did you know that Jay-Z, DMZ, Wu-Tang Clan, and Das EFX all drop credit to their favorite shoes in their rhymes? The influence of these artists was unfathomable to the Timberland Company, and sales tripled thanks to the help of these endorsements. Number 9. They were more popular than Jordans in the early 90s. It's hard to imagine there was a shoe that rivaled the Nike Air Jordan. 
Jordans had virtually dominated the shoe market since their launch in 1984, but as Timberland boots came in, the Jordan had to take a second place. In an attempt to win back the market, Reebok, Adidas, and Nike all created hiking-style boots. Number 10. Nathan Swartz has a rags-to-riches story. Born in 1902 in Russia, Swartz's Jewish family struggled. After World War I, the family emigrated to the USA. Swartz was a fourth generation of shoemakers and so went to work in a New York shoe repair shop as an apprentice. In 1952, he bought Abington Shoe Company and retired in 1968. His sons took over from there and then later his grandson. It wasn't until 2011 that the Swartz family handed over the reins of what has become one of the most iconic shoe brands on every continent on the planet. VF Corporation acquired the company from the Swartzes for an undisclosed amount of money. From a penniless cobbler starting a small shoe factory, the Timberland Company now enjoys an annual revenue of $2 billion. Number 11. Timberland has created some custom fits. When you're Shaquille O'Neal, you can't just walk into a footlocker and walk out with a pair of shoes. His size 22, sometimes 23 foot, makes shoe shopping a bit of a problem. The Timberland Company didn't see it as a barrier and lined up a custom-made 23 for the NBA star. The shoe was so big, a replica was displayed in store windows for all the world to marvel at. But that's not all. Pharrell Williams made us all truly happy when he launched his collection with Timberland in spring of 2013. The exclusive boot was called the Beeline Billionaire Boys Club Classic 6-inch. It was a hit and came in two color options, Olive and Army. And custom Tims aren't just for the grown fans. Beyonce and Jay-Z had a custom order too. The couple reached out to Timberland for a custom order of boots for their tiny daughter, Blue Ivy, and the result, adorable. And this isn't the first time Beyonce has splashed out. Click in the top right corner to watch our video, 15 Crazy Expensive Things Beyonce Owns. Number 12. They're in it for good. The company is not just hardline profits, they care about the environment. In 2007, they launched the Timberland Green Index, which shows customers exactly how their shoes impact the environment. Customers can look up their shoe model online to see the environmental impact. They're all about transparency and have been eco-labeling to put the power in the hands of the buyer for 13 years now. They look for opportunities to use recycled and renewable materials in their shoes, each time reducing the shoe's carbon footprint just a little bit more. Number 13. They were caught in a fake news scandal that even involved Maya Angelou. A few times since the 90s, Timberland has been reportedly involved in racist remarks. Later, we'll reveal the one time it was accurate, but that was long after the Swartz family had left the building. While still in leadership, rumors circulated about the iconic tree logo of the brand. The origin of the rumor was possibly a reference in a poem by Maya Angelou called Clothes. The poem reads, and for footwear, you wear Timberlands, even under the sun. That same tree that's the symbol for them could have been the same one your ancestors were hung from. It goes on to accuse the president of the KKK as the owner of Timberland. The irony is that Maya Angelou denies writing the poem. She was deeply disappointed that the poem was ever associated with her. And as for the validity of the accusations, they've been proven baseless. Timberland has always been an outdoor apparel and environmentally friendly organization, so the use of a tree symbol seems pretty practical. After all, the noun Timberland is defined as a land covered with forest suitable or managed for timber. The company has also been involved in reforesting projects. Just after those rumors died down, a now defunct website called Naha Daily Reports started up a smear campaign about a new CEO who publicly stated, they're work boots, but let's be honest, they don't like to work. They were referring to black and Latino people. The website turned out to be completely fictional and there was a disclaimer on the site stating just that. Unfortunately, the damage was already done and the rumors are still echoing around the far corners of the internet today. And in case you're still worried about the KKK connection, that's also been proven rubbish many times over by internet sleuths who've looked into the Swartz history and turned up with nothing but a hard-working Jewish immigrant family making shoes. Number 14. Timberland helped those helping out at Ground Zero on 9-11. 
After the tragedy of the World Trade Center collapse on 9-11, it was reported that rescue workers' shoes were literally melting under the heat of the crash site. Timberland stepped up and delivered truckloads of their premium waterproof boots that it pulled directly from all of its stores to donate to rescuers. Number 15. The fame of Timberland was more by accident. Sidney Swartz designed the now-beloved Butters to fulfill a need for a tough and reliable shoe for hard-working New Englanders. Creating a waterproof boot was a necessity for outdoor construction workers in the cold, wet New England winters. All design elements had rugged conditions in mind, and the idea of them pounding the sidewalks of New York or being worn on stages by world-famous rappers wasn't even in the scope of reality. Well, Aluxers, that wraps up our story on Timberland. But before you go, we're curious. What do you think of Timberland's rise from a small family shoe run factory? And which business would you like to see us feature next? Let us know in the comments. And of course, for sticking with us until the end, we owe you a bonus or something, don't we? Here it is. Their French partner's comments put the brand in hot water. In 2011, Timberland was in partnership with a French company, APC. During the fall menswear show in Paris, designer Jean Tuatou used vile language and used the N-word in his campaign. According to Tuatou, it was homage to the ghetto background of Timberland. He further backed up his motivation by explaining he run the idea past his good friend Kanye West, who apparently replied saying he liked this vibe. Perhaps he should have done some more research with a wider audience because the offensive campaign saw Timberland immediately drop APC's partnership and the Timberland president, Stuart Whitney, strongly criticized the sentiment of the campaign and the language used. He clearly stated it was the complete opposite of the company's values. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.